guys. It's been a whole week. Welcome back. It is Friday morning, 11 o'clock, and we have Karen yep. in the house. In the house. That's right. <laughs> okay, good. So um, any, anything that we, we suggest um, is not meant to diagnose any of you, just meant for you to uh, get research and do research with the help of your medical doctor. Okay? Uh, with that said, uh, a little later today, we're going to be talking about the relationship between your friendly bacteria and your weight. Okay, very interesting. So don't leave. Stay for that. And so uh, why don't we just jump right on to the first caller, uh, Sue from Indiana. Hi, Sue. Yes, good morning. Thank you. Uh, my family has lost nearly 100 pounds on your plan, and we're feeling great, so wow. thanks. <laughs> this awesome. is my question. My elderly mother needs to start your plan. She uh, eats a lot of bad food, thyroid-type, classic gallbladder symptoms, rhomboid pain, uh, headaches all the time for years. Um, this is my question. She has significant swelling on the right side in the thoracic area. In the back, could a fatty liver or gallbladder swell out the back too? Good question, Sue. Um, absolutely. In fact, myself, I had... Uh some liver problems, and I, that's where I had it. It was on the right side. Anything on the right side on the back by the scapula, between your spine and the scapula, that whole area, up into your neck. A lot of times you get this uh, knot on this muscle up here by the trap, um, and you're always constantly massaging it. That usually could be either uh, liver stuff going on or gallbladder. But yeah, that's really common. So um, the cool thing is that if you do intermittent fasting, you give the gallbladder and liver a chance to re, uh, rejuvenate and heal. And then uh, when you do keto, you're dropping your carbs, you're dropping your insulin, which then will take a lot of stress off the gallbladder as well. Because even what causes gallstones is high levels of insulin. People think it's just the saturated fats. Saturated fats increase the release of bile. The problem is when you combine those fats with sugar, that's when you get a real big problem, like in a donut. But um, I'm not saying you can just eat a pound of bacon and not have gallbladder problems, but the point is that you, if you go on a low-fat diet, uh, you, you, your risk for kidney stones go, I mean, your gallstones go up. So um, what really messes with the gallbladder is the breads, the pasta, the sugar, and uh, the combination of fat and the sugar, like an ice cream. Um, so anyway, I think uh, I would recommend that and that those symptoms should go away. Um, a lot of greens will also uh, be good for the liver, too. So go ahead and try that, Sue. Thanks for your call. All right. So let's take another call. Um, Shamika from Toronto. You had a question. Go ahead. Um, I have a question. I have prolactinoma, and um, basically I have a pituitary tumor, and I have high prolactin, which is a 400 and no period. And I want to lose weight, and I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's just a good question that I, I really can't um, give you advice for medical conditions, but the area that you could research with the help of your doc is um, uh, basically intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting in relationship to tumors. You should uh, just type that up, and you'll find a lot of great data um, because the frequent eating, you know, who knows if that could have a big effect on uh, just the tumor in general. Um, as far as the pituitary, pituitary is like the, the middleman. You have the, the hypothalamus, which is kind of like the owner of the football team. The pituitary is like the coach. And then you have the lower level uh, glands that uh, take orders from the pituitary. Um, <clears throat> so I think intermittent fasting would be like a real uh, key area to look at. Um, and also, if it's related to prolactin, um, then we have, I would also look at all the things that can interfere with the ovary and also send feedback up. So, and type, you know, do a research on endocrine disruptors. And that would be like anything in the environment that mimics estrogen that has the ability to create tumors, um, not just of the pituitary, but the ovary too. So I would look at that and start going really, really clean, organic foods, hormone-free foods. Thanks for your call. Now, Karen, how, um, do we have any call uh, people on social media that are from other parts of the world? Yes, we do. I'm just making notes here. We have Canada, Romania, Ireland, Denmark, Spain, Nigeria, France, Ukraine, Australia, all over the United States, 
Ohio, Texas, New York, New York City, uh, Missouri, Philly, which is not a state, but it should be. Uh, Wisconsin, your home, your homies yes. are watching. Massachusetts, just all over the place. I, I can't write it all because they're just from too many places. That's awesome. But they have questions. Okay, good. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready for a question okay. or two. Okay, good. So Sheila's on uh, Facebook. Okay. From Ohio, and she says um, she's type 2 diabetes. She's been on keto just since May, and she's lost 30 pounds, which is amazing. But she said it's harder from the, in the midsection. It's not coming off in the midsection. Why would it be so much harder to lose weight in that area? Well, let's, if we back up on the question, she's a type 2 diabetic, right? That's what she's saying. That is, that is one of the challenges. If you're type 2 diabetic, that means you have insulin resistance. So even though you have some benefits from the diet by lowering insulin, insulin resistance takes a bit of time, especially if you're a diabetic. Think about what happens in the chain of events, okay? By the time you have pre-diabetes, insulin has been high for a long period of time usually, okay? So you have high insulin, which no one ever tests, but normal blood sugars until probably 10 years, and then you have pre-diabetes, okay? So it's higher levels of sugar. And then you become a diabetic eventually after that when it's just out of control. By that time, you got some serious uh, insulin resistance that's causing a feedback loop. Now, do you understand why insulin resistance increases insulin? I'm just trying to understand why it takes longer to burn the fat in the belly. Okay, I knew, you're gonna, I knew someone was going to ask that question. Sheila, yeah. I got your back on so, this one. All right, so let me just kind of make this simple because <laughs> I just we, assume we everyone wants from, to know. We went from 101, why is my belly big? Don't you to want to know the, uh, the college level, university about, level okay. lecture on right. insulin resistance. So Sheila wants you, to know, when am I going to lose my belly? So for those of you that don't want to know why. <laughs> it's not, it's, I can't um, speak. Okay, Look, so I'm not saying this, that you don't want to know why. It, but could, it, Sheila could wants take, to, it could take up to a year to really see some significant change. Okay, Is that, are you good with that? No. Why would it take longer to burn the belly fat because the belly fat is dependent on how, how, how much insulin resistance or how much insulin sensitivity you have. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere then. Uh, why, is my, why are my hips the last thing to go? That's a completely different question that we have to answer in the next okay. second. <laughs> All right, Sheila. That's estrogen. Oh. That's completely different. Completely different. All completely right. Completely well, different. Sheila. That's yeah, just give I it some get. time. Keep Keep going. It's going to be handled eventually, but don't give up. But just realize that, you know, we want to go for health first, getting healthy. And you, the weight loss is one of the factors. Um, the, the most important factor is uh, recovery, repair, like energy level. Energy level, other factors, is your cravings go away. And, she, away. and she did lose 30 pounds. Okay. Well, I so mean, that's it's, a it's, lot. It's working. Yeah. Um, maybe not as fast in, in the area that you w might want to uh, lose it. But one more point, you can always improve it. At the summit, we are going to be covering this a lot more in detail, especially in relationship to stubborn fat, stubborn mm. problems. We're going we're gonna to cover stubborn like problems. a complete <laughs> profile of what to do. Um, but one more thing, do uh, stricter intermittent fasting, lower your carbs a little bit more in mm. the meantime. All right. Okay. So, Sheila, Sheila got a lot there. Do we got one more question? Yes. So, um, so here's one. I suffering uh, from inter, uh, IBS for okay. two years, and uh, whatever it eats turns into gas. Yeah. Sounds like it's coming from his stomach from the left side. Any advice? Now, I'm assuming this guy is on keto and IF. Right, we're he just assuming say. that. He doesn't say. She, he doesn't say. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. Uh, if you have IBS, Crohn's, all these digestive issues, infl inflammation, um, you, you really can't just do, what's, well, what's going to actually mess you up with doing keto is the types of vegetables and the quantities of vegetables. You're, what's happening, there's inflammation and probably damage of the cells that help you absorb the nutrients in the small intestine, okay? Um, and so if you don't have the full absorption, you have two things happening. You got undigested particles of fiber and food, undigested. 
which means that the microbes have to go to town and start to really try to you know, deal with it. So you're going to get too much fermentation. And with that comes gas, methane gas. And Why are you pointing gas. at No, I, I wasn't pointing. Pointing, I was just me pointing when, over when there you say to methane Steve. Gas. Steve's over there. I was pointing to Steve. Oh, well, that, would, gas. that makes a little more sense. But you just got to watch where your finger's going. <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> the point is that when you have uh, gla gas, you get bloating. Uh, bloating. <laughs> I wasn't pointing at you. I was pointing over at Steve. So what happens is you have to change the type of vegetables. I just released a video, I think, on this. Maybe I didn't. Okay, anyway, I will be releasing it if I didn't. But here's some teaser. examples of vegetables I think you'll be safe with. Zucchini, squash, lettuce, celery, eggplant. What kind of lettuce, though? Um, just <laughs> green lettuce, okay? But nothing too complex, um, something like really basic. And then probably some fermented and a lot less vegetables. So you have to adjust that until the point where you don't bloat anymore. And then then slowly over time start increasing it more and more and more. Okay, so that'll probably solve the problem in addition to intermittent fasting. Right. Okay? Good. All right. So just a note that today we are going to give a free VIP ticket away to the Keto Summit in October. Awesome. And uh, we are just about to announce, probably in the next 10 minutes, which platform, either the phone or, uh, I was going to say Amazon, uh, Facebook or YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Yes, this is exciting. Yeah. A lot of you guys are coming. Okay, yeah. so this is awesome. Awesome. We're, we're just tons of people are signing up. This is going to be the most amazing event. If you don't know about it, you have to go to KetoHealthSummit.com and definitely come because it's going to be the most incredible event in October 13th and 14th. Mm -hmm. and the peak season, gorgeous fall. fall. Beautiful. But the main thing you're coming is to uh, exp uh, experience an amazing um, kind of a, a massive correction of any things that you might have that are false or missing or uh, not focused on. So when you get this full piece of information, uh, you're going to walk away with um, now the major ability to get seriously healthy for real and uh, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's it's uh, winding up to be the largest keto summit in the United States ever. Yeah, it's going Which to be. Which is exciting. Yeah. You want to be a part of that. We're going to we're going to go to uh, okay. Mahish from India. Are you there? Good. Yeah, good morning sir. How are good you doing? Good morning. Yeah. What was your question? Uh, my English is not good, that good, so you, yeah, my English is not that good, so you might face some problem to understand. But I'll try my best to make you understand my question. So basically, I found you. I'm fortunate to found you 38 days before, and uh, I'm so lucky to have you 38 days before. And I watched your video in 72 hours. Most of the all the video in 72 hours, and I start doing keto and IF from last 34 days. I lost almost 42 pounds. And my keto and I have is doing so great. Good. I'm really thankful to you for you know, awesome. Uh, you know, giving all all this information on YouTube. So right now, you know, my question is that um, uh, I am uh, having a lot of, of fat on my face and uh, under the chin, and uh, it's very difficult to you know get rid of it. So that is the first question. And second one is, you know, uh, if you can make a video on a very close vein, because there's a lot of Asian is suffering here in India and in Asia. That are uh, from a very good vein. So, if you have any solution or if you have any any kind of you know pro procedure to help that very good vein, so if you can make okay. one video okay. on that also. Awesome. I will. I will create that video. And uh, probably the third largest source of um, people that are watching our YouTube channel is from India. So we're going to have to do a road trip. Um, I would love to go to India. Yeah. So it's. Uh, Never been there, so. Uh, and we may be going to Africa. I think maybe you'll be going to Africa. The <laughs> we flight's have some... just way too far. The I flight mean, is too far. Yeah, for me. Too, too long? long. Too long. Too long. Too far. Yeah, but I mean, it's an amazing, I, amazing my place. My cap is ten hours. If it goes out past ten. I'm traveling. A so we have to draw. I think India is pretty close, right? Yeah. We can travel by uh, automobile. Okay, so I want to answer the question. Double chin. Um, that <laughs> He's is. Calling? A, that is a situation because, um, you know, I, 
what happens, you, you might lose the weight and all of a sudden have excess collagen. The, there are, there are cer certain exercises that you can do to improve that, but there is a point of limitation where you, you might need to do something else. I, I don't really have the answer to that at this point, so I'm not going to comment on that, but here's what I, I do want to say. Uh, as you continue to get healthy, um, part of your skin is is the body tissue that should also get healthy and the amount of collagen improvement that you can that can occur especially with intermittent fasting I think you can greatly improve it 100 percent I can't say but I think you can improve the collagen resiliency and elasticity of your your skin if you do a bit more strict intermittent fasting okay that said you also need to add healthy fats for your skin to look really good as well and um, something we're going to be talking about digestive health. If your digestion is not right, and this is another point you brought up about your stomach, I have a ton of videos on it, but um, I'm not, I don't know specifically what problem you have, but I am going to be creating more videos on the stomach and your GI. So, and then I have some already, so that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. But thanks for your call. All right, what do we got? Okay, good. So we have Craig. He's from Georgia. He says, I've been doing keto and intermittent fasting, you know, and I think this relates to everything you're going to talk about in a minute with the micros, but I've been doing intermittent fasting for the last four weeks. I've lost 20 pounds in four weeks. That's incredible. It's not bad. No. And I feel great. I only eat one meal a day around five. My question is, I get so constipated. Is it okay to take magnesium citrate saline laxative? This works really great for my constipation. And he loves <coughs> all your videos. Okay, great. Absolutely. Magnesium is totally fine and that form is totally fine because it's more important to keep the bowels going than have them constipated. People are concerned like, oh, I don't want to take a, a, a natural laxative because I don't want to become addicted. Well, guess what? Being constipated, the danger of that is like way worse than potentially being addicted to magnesium, which you're not going to be addicted. Um, here's one point about that. Chances are you're constipated because of the type of vegetables that you're consuming. The microbes live really mainly on one thing, and that's fiber. So the type of fiber you need to do is you need to change it up. I would start adding some fermented. I'd probably cut down the quantity of vegetables that you're consuming because some people can't uh, automatically digest 20 cups of vegetables per day like I do. So they have to cut it down to maybe 19. So <laughs> we want actually a smaller amount of vegetables, probably steam some, and then change the type. 20 cups a day. I was being sarcastic. Cut that down to 10. Um, some people can only really digest five cups in a day, but the type of vegetables that you have to change to would be squash, um, peppers. zucchini, uh, peppers, totally fine with peppers, eggplant, maybe some carrot, um, also uh, just green leafy vegetables. Onion. Onions, yeah, they'll be okay. But avoid the other ones right now because we can't have you constipated at all. And there's some other things that we're going to be coming out with very soon with videos of, of homemade different things that you can make to even improve your digestion more. But I'm not going to say anything about it because that's going to be a surprise. Mm. All right. Good. Good. So, Lisa, you're from Redwood Valley, California. You had a question about estrogen. Go ahead. Um, yes. Good morning. I've really been helped by your um, by your program a lot. Oh, um, so yeah, I know I have estrogen dominant, dominant and insulin sensitivity, um, and I've been doing. It's been improving some on my on the keto and intermittent fasting, but I noticed that um, probably because of that, I don't know which one's more dominant. That my adrenals they do better, and then they start really struggling. Like the last several days or the last week, my adrenals are just really firing and really having a problem. So. I don't know which one's more dominant, which making the problem. Okay. Uh, Lisa, do you have um, any problem with facial hair? Um, a little bit. A little I bit. have Lyme disease. I've, I've talked with you before. Um, not a whole lot. I mean, I have like on my chin, a little oh. tiny bit, but not a lot. All right. Do you have mid -sex? But I've also had seven babies. Seven babies? You I've had go, seven girl. babies, and I'm 47 years old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. And how many, how many more are you going to have? No. Loving the babies. No. Um, no, I'm done. Okay. So <laughs> I have grandbabies now. <laughs> what question I oh, have, wow. Lisa, I have a question. Um, did you okay. have them all um, vaginal birth or were they C-section? 
I had five vaginal births um, and two C-section. Okay. Were they all breastfed? Yes, they were. Great. How long typically were they breastfed for? Um, well, that varied. The last one was three years, but the, typically about a year and a half. That's, that's awesome. Great. That is so that, awesome. You're like the model mom. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, no, no. <laughs> I have lots of prayer. I, I, know, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's my rock. Awesome. awesome. Well, here's the thing, Alisa, and I'm just going to bring up one point about breastfeeding. For those of you uh, mothers that are debating whether to go infant formula, you have to breastfeed. I'm telling you why. Because it, that, that the microbes that are developed in the uh, infant's digestive tract are highly influenced by what you initially feed the baby. And if it's infant formula, uh, the risks go way up. Obesity, diabetes, um, metabolic syndrome, blood pressure. And they go way down with breastfeeding because you actually have the colostrum, which is for the immune system. You have all these incredible microbes. And uh, minimally six months, but up to two years would be optimum. She did three years, which is just awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, that's very, very good. So I'm glad you did that. Also, it's really important with the C-section. Actually has other, other issues. We'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But getting back to your issue, um, estrogen dominant, uh, a couple things that you want to do. Number one, you want to add more cruciferous vegetables in your diet, number one. Number two... Iodine from sea kelp is very vital to help balance estrogen. So that's something that I would add for your estrogen balance. And the reason I was asking about the facial hair is because um, if someone has uh, problems with polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, they can actually have problems like you described, in which case, you know, they just need to do keto and intermittent fasting, and that will actually bring down insulin and then help the androgens that are too high. There's a really great product, it's called Myo um, uh, Inositol. Myo Inositol. And you can get that, but it's really good to support ovarian health, fertility, polycystic ovarian, and it's just support for general balance of the ovary hormones. So just make mental note of that. As far as your adrenals go, um, you're getting kind of close to menopause, so the adrenals are going to start to kind of work harder uh, in this transition because they're going to have to back up the ovaries. So now is the time to really try to drop your stress as much as possible. And I'm not just talking about physical stress. I'm still talking about mental stress. One of the biggest thing, things that mess up the adrenals is this chronic uh, mental stress. And it's mainly related to chronic unsolved problems that someone might be dealing with, taking care of a loved one. Oh, my gosh. It's like, let's say someone, um, like your parent, for example, is sick, and you've got to take care of this parent. Eventually, you know, I think we all have to do that, but it creates tremendous stress on the person by, you know, so what you need to do right now is uh, get every single person in your family super healthy, mm -hmm. your parents, your kids, your relatives, and your neighbors, so you don't end up having to take care of them. Alone. Alone, by yourself, and stressing yourself out. So I see that a lot. So, or sooner than you So need anything to. that you're dealing with this chronic stress, whatever it is, go after solving that because that's going to increase cortisol. Cortisol is going to increase insulin and that's going to make you fat. What's that mean? Are they drawing circles? <laughs> all right. So, all right. Thanks, Lisa. You had a question. Yeah, Maybe there's guys here that got tons of questions. Okay, so I have uh, Joseph on Facebook. And this is funny because we were just listening about uh, to research this morning on this. He says when he has bulletproof coffee in the morning, he gets higher ketone counts throughout the day. Is it more important to get into op is it more important to get into optimal ketosis or maintain the fast until lunch? So he's assuming <coughs> that the coffee and the um, bulletproof coffee is getting him more into ketosis. It is. It is. So let me just discuss this because this, okay. this is a point that of huge confusion. I'm going to do a video today on it um, because people have this, there's, a, there's this confusion on when you do bulletproof coffee or you're adding more cream or MCT. butter, MCT oil to your coffee, okay? And does it break the fast? All right, let's just define the fast. And this is the confusion. People actually think 
the fast is like being in ketosis, which it is. Um, so now let's switch gears to say, does it break your ketosis? No. Uh, adding more fat actually adds more ketones, okay? So it's not going to break ketosis, but it will break your weight loss. So if you're trying to lose weight, just understand that you're dumping in dietary fat, okay? This means that the body doesn't have to use its own fat reserve because it has the fuel coming in this way. So you make ketones from the dietary fat, but now your own fat. So we have a net uh, weight loss of zero, which is fine if you're not trying to lose weight. So if you're struggling to lose weight, adding more fat will prevent you from losing weight, but at the same time it increases your ketones. Your ketones. So it really depends on your goal. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So do we have another question? Um, sure. So someone just has a curiosity about uh, the cruciferous supplement and um, is it good if you can't get all the vegetables you need? Is it a vegetable replacement? Yeah, uh, no, it's an enhancement. It will help a little bit, but you need to consume some vegetables. The concentrated cruciferous is a unique product because it helps to support a healthy liver and healthy estrogen levels because of the diversify of, of types of cruciferous. It's really hard to consume um, 13 cruciferous vegetables in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the organic sea kelp in there and the um, curcumin and garlic and other things that are in there. So it's just a unique product for that, but it's not a replacement for your vegetables. Okay, good. Okay. Yep. Hey, Stacy, you're from um, Oklahoma. Go ahead. You had a question. Yes. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, okay, so you've said that stress keeps you from losing weight, mm -hmm. even if you're fat adapted. Yeah. And I know the signs for being fat adapted, you know, the lack of hunger, clear mind. But is there a test that I can take to prove that I'm fat adapted to reduce my stress so that I know that I'm burning fat and not just starving myself? Yeah. Because if I'm not hungry, you know, your mind can play tricks on you. And you can right. think you're adapted if you're not. Right. Well, the, the, the two biggest things that tell you if you're fat adapted is, number one, are the cravings gone? Okay, no cravings. Do you have cravings? The sugar? Well, I, it depends when, I, when I'm yo-yoing. My daughter is having cravings but she's not hungry. Okay. She's 15. So we're, we're all, the whole family is doing this, so we're all on different levels. Yeah. I think, do you know what would be really good? And, uh, um, and I'm going to talk more about this at the summit, but um, Stacy, here's the thing that I would recommend. Get, get a, uh, a testing kit, or you might already have one, uh, that measures your ketones and, and your blood sugars at the same time. Um, and the Mojo... Um, a brand is like one of the best because they have they have the unit that's self-contained and also um, the strips are really inexpensive because sometimes these little testing uh, units are they they get you on the strips so here's the thing if you could check your blood sugars on a regular basis for your whole family and track it blood sugars and ketones together and see what happens and you can keep your ketones fairly fairly high or at least in the positive and keep your blood sugars low, then you're fat adapted. Okay, that's the real main thing. And then, um, let's say for example, you are, it's not working out that way, your sugars are still high and you're still craving or you're whatever. Another factor is this darn cortisol. And the cortisol usually spikes at um, eight o'clock in the morning. If your cortisol is high with stress, that does have the potential to cause your liver to make sugar. But you know what? That's going to show up on your blood glucose test. So if your blood glucose test is low, then chances are you're not, you don't have high cortisol. Okay? So you really don't have to even worry about cortisol. You just have to look at that blood sugar. We want the blood sugar low. We want the ketosis high. So when you lower your blood sugars, ketones go higher and like a teeter-totter. When the blood sugars go up, ketones go low. But there is a situation where both of them might increase at the same time as you're adapting to ketones, in which case, um, go by how you feel, your cravings, and also your, um, your hunger. 
All right. I don't even know if I answered that, but thanks for your question. <laughs> that was good information. All right. Hey, Ronnie, you're from Royal City, Washington. You had a question. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I took your D3 and K2 capsules when I started doing the keto program. And um, when I took that, I kind of felt like my heart was pounding in my chest. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't take any more for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then um, I took another one, and I kind of had that same kind of pounding, but in my head, like a headache afterwards. Mm. And so I just wondered, that was kind of weird. I've taken K2 before, but not D3. Ah. And I just wondered, is that kind of a common thing, or what's going on with that? D3 can potentially lower blood pressure. <laughs> so that could be kind of affecting that a little bit. Um, here's what I would do if I were you, Ronnie. I would take it with food and see if it, it doesn't it become a problem. And uh, then let me know, okay? I think it should be, you always wanna take D3 and K2 with some food, pr primarily some fat. Um, but what I did uh, to my D3 and K2 family, uh, K K2 formulation, is I added some purified bile salts so they're really absorbed. So the need for them goes down. So you don't need as much now because you get, a, you get so much more absorption. So, um, because the bile salts help with that. It's a really unique product. But I've never heard that before, so that's uncommon, but try taking it with food, okay? And guys, I just wanna let you know um, this. If there's a link down below that you can click and get this amazing list. This is the Keto Eating Plan. It's a summary of all the foods that are approved with some basic information. If you wanna get this cool sheet, you can download it. There's a link down below. Um, so check it out. It's, it's, it's summarized. It's kind of like cheat sheet of what to eat and what not to eat. You like that? Yep. Good. You can have it. <laughs> Yay. All right. So Karen. Okay. So first of all, I want to announce that today YouTube is the platform of the winning VIP ticket holder. All right. YouTube. Yes. So if you would definitely come to the summit if you want a ticket. I want you to put yes, your first and last name, your city and state. Wow. Or country. Because we have a lot of people. We have people we have coming people from, from all over the world, Bangkok, Thailand, from Ireland, Thailand, all over Canada, Hawaii, Australia. Australia, Puerto Rico. People from all over the world are coming to this. Yeah. It's incredibly exciting so so, if, so they type in what now so if you're on youtube and you would come to the summit if you want a vip ticket put your just put yes your first and last name or even your first initial and last name and then the area like um, because we're going to have to verify southeastern your Asia? id and things like that what, you mean, you mean <laughs> yeah, like uh, city and state kenosha city wisconsin and state. yeah city right? and state or british columbia canada yeah Something like that. Okay. Okay, and then uh, we'll pick later. Now I have a question here. Yes. I have Chuck on uh, on YouTube. He says he's been on keto and IF since November. He's lost thirty pounds. Ding 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 ding. Good. Awesome. Um, he's passing kidney stones, and even though it's painful, he's wondering is this a sign of his kidneys or something uh, working better? Mm hmm. Okay, so some people are um, predisposed to kidney stones, and I have quite a few videos on this. So there's a couple things that you can do. Um, it, usually you're gonna get uric acid stones uh, if you're doing keto, just because the, the ketones are more acidic. And um, so the best thing to do is to always consume lemon juice with your water right now, drink a little bit more water, and you want to keep your vegetables high to, to keep things a little bit more alkalized. Um, the other thing that's uh, really important as far as a remedy is something called phytic acid, but you won't find phytic acid in a supplement. It's called IP6, okay? IP6, you can get some of that, take that. That will help uh, as kind of, it's called a chelator to kind of help chelate some of that issue out. But um, those are the things that I would do and then watch all my videos. Um, on a really uh, stubborn, you know, kidney stone, you, you might need a more powerful chelation product, and that's called EDTA, and it's a chelator, EDTA. You can take that um, on an empty stomach, and that will actually help 
with um, pulling out calcium, calcification. All right, good. All right, and Karen, we have, um, well, I'll hold off with a question until later because the, I need to answer these calls here. Anna, you're from Virginia Beach. You had a question. Go ahead. Anna? You said, can I pre-mix your powders and drink them later? Are you there? Yes, okay. I am. Okay. So that, that was your question, right? Yes. Okay. The answer is? I'm mostly thinking about the wheatgrass with electrolyte powder. Okay. Yeah. I think if you drink it within a few hours, you're going to be totally fine. You can pre-mix the electrolyte powder, and it'll last for three or four days. But the, wheat, the wheatgrass is something that is raw. So when you add water, you know, it'll last a couple hours. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not going to be fine, but um, it's raw. So as soon as you, you activate those enzymes, uh, it's best that you drink it within, I mean, right away or within a few hours. Okay. But... Something okay. to know is that on our website we have drink containers and no we don't it's not on the website now it's not on the website no, yet not yet <gasps> okay yeah, well stay literally. stay tuned because uh, we have drink containers that actually have a, something on the bottom that you can unscrew to store your powders and things like that so you don't even have to pre mix it you can have it all in a cup and then when you're ready you that yeah, would be wonderful yeah it's coming it's coming and then it even has a little vitamin storage in the bottom too it's a really cool bottle. So that's coming soon. Stay tuned. Thanks, Anna. Yes. Okay, cool. Hey, Pete, you're from uh, Gilbert, Arizona. You had a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Bird. Thanks, Hi. thanks for taking my call. I sure. uh, just wanted you to know uh, I discovered you on YouTube back in February, and, and since then I've sort of eliminated all um, sugar from my diet and I've been doing intermittent fasting, and since then I've lost 40 pounds. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's it's been great. So p prior to that, I, I'm pretty sure that I was insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, and just a guess. <laughs> but yeah, my, so my question is, what, once once you become insulin resistant, are you like always insulin resistant after that? Just like an alcoholic would always be an alcoholic, or can that be corrected with the proper proper diet and nutrition? Good question, Pete. That's a question that. We don't know 100% for sure. We just don't have the data yet because we, there's not a lot of long-term studies. However, just from working with people for a long time, I will, I'm going to say, yes, you can, you can resolve this to the point. But the, the, it's kind of like this. To really know this for sure, it's kind of like, okay, so, all right, I have insulin resistance. I do the diet for a period of year. Now I go back to what I was eating before. Am I no longer insulin resistant? Well, what happens is you're going to actually, you could potentially just create it again, you know. So I, I can't tell you exactly what happens at that point, but I will say that going on keto and intermittent fasting is more of a long-term thing, and, and it's going to improve insulin sensitivity greatly. But the point is that if you go off, <clears throat> it'll, things will be better, but just realize what caused it in the first place is high, high amounts of sugar, and so that could eventually just kind of create it again. Um, the best thing to do is to um, just stick on it, stick, stick with it as a maintenance and, uh, uh, and build up your health reserve to the point where you have the ability to go off occasionally and your insulin levels are fine. Um, but on the flip side, Pete, I'm going to say this, that um, when you start cleaning up your diet of sugars and alcohol, you no longer have these um, microbes and you long, no longer have these enzymes that you had maybe when you were on high level of sugar and high level of alcohol. Not to say that you drank alcohol, but people in general, um, it's kind of like when they go off the program, they're more sensitive sometimes. Like myself, I just can't handle my liquor like I used to. Um, <laughs> in college, I could drink a lot of liquor. Now I can't. So I don't drink. So, but what happens, like people that are used to it, they, they can tolerate more of it. So... Um, I think um, that's how, that's basically my answer. Good. Thanks, Pete. So either either you're going to have to eat a lot of sugar a long time to build up resistance, or just not eat it. So you can pick which one. No, I don't think that eating sugar is really no. a serious response. Okay, all right, good. Okay. So are we are we going to 
Are we ready for some no, answers? We're no, gonna, okay. we're going to wait another uh, five or ten minutes, and uh, it's only 11.41 right now. So again, if you're on YouTube, and you would come to this summit if you got a free VIP ticket, mm -hmm. put, enter it in the comments, yes, your name, first and last, or it can be an initial and last name. And where you live. And where you live, city and state, or um, we're getting some countries here. Zip code. Okay, Karen, <laughs> so here's the question for everyone, phone. all the viewers, okay, I have a question, okay, okay. see if they get it right. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. Are you? True or false? Okay. okay, we're gonna make this easy. True or false? Okay. All of your friendly bacteria that you have in your body is an actual organ. Is it true or false? Mm. Got you on that one, didn't I? I did. Okay, good. So while you're answering that, guys, I'm gonna go on to Yolanda. She's been waiting for 18 minutes and 33 seconds. You're from New Jersey. Go ahead, Yolanda. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hi. So nice to talk to you. Karen, your hair looks very nice. Oh, thank you. How about mine? <laughs> okay, my question is this. <laughs> I've been in... Oh, <laughs> yours almost. Almost, almost. I know. I, have, I need some hairspray. <laughs> some gel action. Yeah. Almost as good as her. <laughs> thank no, you. I'm just kidding. I'll take it. So my question is this. You're welcome. I've been on ketosis for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. I lost uh, 10 pounds. I am a gastro sleep patient back about four years ago. But my question is this, I am eating a lot of fat, so I want to uh, slow down on the fat because now for about a week I'm not losing anything. Right. So can I cut down the fat and if that's going to throw me out of ketosis? Okay, good question. Uh, no, uh, cutting down your fat will not throw you out of ketosis. And yes, you, you can cut down your fat. Um, the, perp, the one of the functions of the fat is to help you go from long, long from one meal to the next longer, because um, it's satisfying. But if you find that um, your cravings are going away and you're not hungry anymore, cut down the fat and you're going to lose more weight. Uh, keep your carbs low though. Don't increase the carbs. Uh, but one point I want to bring up uh, about this: uh, a lot of times people do not know um, that you with keto, a healthy keto is not just any old fats. You want to do high quality healthy fats. And one of the most healthy fats is omega-3 fatty acids in the form of something called DHA and EPA. And that really uh, supports the brain, the hormones, the nervous system, the cellular membranes, everything. So if you're cutting down the fat, make sure that you have higher levels of omega-3. And you can even do a high quality supplement, uh, virgin cod liver oil. Um, just make sure that the um, the codfish are in separate tanks, to, so there, it's virgin cod liver oil. That was a bad joke. Um, that you didn't even listen or get. Okay. Uh, you know what? I did pick it up. Um, but you, you a little just ignored bit it because it, it was bad. Into this ear, and then okay. I, I was hoping everybody else didn't get it. Didn't okay. get it too. Okay, but the the point is that um, you get most of your omega three from fatty fish. Make sure it's well caught, and then egg yolks, and then the grass fed meats and things. But even like the lowest amount of omega-3 in fish are still t 10 times more the omega-3 you get in uh, meats. So the fish is the best, oysters are great, supplements fine, that's what I would do. Now, some people are gonna say, well, can I do it from other foods that can convert like flax or walnut? Well, the conversion does happen, but not in the, the amounts that you need, okay? So that was a long answer to a short question, but thanks, Yolanda. <laughs> All right, Karen. I'm okay. ready for a question. Right, I'm fixing my. Can my we get? Here. How about, okay, good. Let's give answers to. Okay, so on Facebook mostly uh, we got false, and on YouTube it's uh, a, a mix. A true mixed bag. And false. All right. It's a mixed bag. Well, I think what we need is a, a kind of a drum roll trumpet, or a trumpet drum or something. Roll, an elephant. And the answer is true. Whoa! Yeah, you're, the microbes are considered a metabolic organ because they're so intimately involved in enzyme production, um, digestion, uh, the immune system, that it's considered an organ. Wow. I mean, think about it. You have a, a, hundred, a thousand trillion microbes growing inside and around your body, Karen. 
right now. It's kind of creepy. It's a little on the creepy side. And if you didn't have those microbes, you wouldn't be able to live. You'd be gone, a goner. I would, be, would I be the girl in the bubble? Not even that. You'd be, uh -huh. It'd be worse than that because you couldn't digest. So you need these microbes. Mm -hmm. And um, should we talk about microbes now? Is it, is it appropriate? What time is it? it yeah. I think it's microbe time. Okay, it's micro time. Because, because I think that, you know, my issue isn't that I'm not losing weight. <coughs> After what you told me earlier this morning about how many microbes. Yeah, you have a lot. I think that I'm gaining microbes. Well, this is a good thing, Karen, but we don't want to have <laughs> an overgrowth of the wrong microbes. Oh. We want just the correct, we want different species and we want um, just the right amount. Okay. okay, so here's the thing, guys. Go um, for it. I'm not going to get into this too much because you'll, uh, I'm going to do a video on it and also um, we're going to talk a lot of, about this at the summit and some of the stuff we're not going to talk about on YouTube is going to be at the summit, so you have to come to the summit to get this data because it's mind-blowing. But here's the point. Um, they have done experiments with mice and they have actually um, extracted microbes from a fat mouse and inject them into a skinny mouse and the skinny mouse gets fat. Now, how the heck could that possibly be true? How could that work? And is it true for humans? Do microbes play a role in your weight? Well, guess what? Guess what they used for 50 years, which they're still using, by the way, to fatten cattle, chickens, and turkeys, and pigs? That's right, Karen. Antibiotics. I knew the answer to that, but you're on your own. You're right. on your own. So antibiotics um, basically kill off your the good and bad bacteria, and it's one of the most significant things to cause weight gain. And they don't know exactly why, but I think I know why. And it has to do with it actually increases insulin. It creates uh, insulin resistance. So you might say, well, I don't I don't take antibiotics. Well, do you eat? Uh, animal pro protein that's not uh, completely 100% free of antibiotics? Well, that's, that's going to be in the video that I'm going to create because, you know, you might say, well, I always have grass-fed, I eat my, you know, but, but when you go out to dinner, chances are you're going to get uh, meats and things, chicken that have had antibiotics, and that does cross over. And I really believe that is the reason why Americans are overweight more than Europeans because in Europe they ban the use of antibiotics. As far as I, I know, I'm not 100%, but that's what I've been <laughs> After told. After you said that with such certainty. Well, that, I mean, they ban it. Every time I, mean, I say I that, all of a sudden I find out like some, some new study that said, oh, there's still some. So I'm, they ban most of them. It's a lot less than America. In America, do you realize that 80% of all the antibiotics that are sold in America are for animal feeds and in the water? That's crazy. I mean, 80% of the total. A, that is like insane. So we're basically, it's really about gut health. And uh, this is another reason why you, you need to do uh, cabbage and fermented vegetables on a regular basis. And um, because we're getting this indirect exposure of antibiotics. Um, also, the type of fiber that you feed your microbes is vital. Um, and they found some interesting data, which you'll see in the video coming up. The, the more diverse the fiber, the better the microbe. So if you can consume many different types of vegetables versus just one type of vegetable every day, like I do, uh, which I'm going to be changing, a lot of different vegetables, you actually can increase the fiber and increase the, the species of microbes that you have. Um, so this is the gut health is like so important, but, um, and it also breastfeeding is vital, C-section. If your child uh, was um, not breastfed, C-section, and given antibiotics before um, six months old, chances are that child's going to have some issues. That being said, we need to go to Julio real fast because he's been waiting 19 minutes. So you're from Long Beach, California. Go ahead, Julio. Yes, hi. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. Um, I'm 44 years old, and I just started. I weigh like 360-some pounds. I just started this keto stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, been on water fasting now for today's my 10th day, just water fasting. Wow. Um, and I actually feel great. It's amazing. Like, I don't understand it. <laughs> um, it's awesome. I have energy. Like I've lost about 20 pounds in 10 days. That's um, great. 
Yeah, everybody's tripping on me. Like, how can you not even feel good? I'm like, I feel good. Because you're um, living off your own Okay, path. but anyway, the question. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I literally wake up. When I wake up, I'm not sluggish anymore. I just wake up. It's wow. weird. That's awesome. That's really good. But this is the question now I'm having. Um, now that I'm water fasting, I've been water fasting, like I said, for 10 days. Is it safe or not safe to take? Is it, is it smart or not smart to take supplements while doing this? It's very, very smart, and I would make sure the quality of supplements are very high. You want to supplement because you're getting a lot of your fuel from your fat right now, which is awesome, but you don't have all the water-soluble vitamins and some of the fat-soluble vitamins in your fat. You can't guarantee that you're getting those too. So sooner or later, you're going to run out of these nutrients. So we're talking about the B vitamins. So nutritional yeast is very important. The electrolytes are vitally important. Um, <clears throat> And the trace minerals are very important. Um, so I would definitely, it's time to su uh, supplement. Um, and it's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you. Um, but for those of you that are wondering, like, how could he feel so good? If you think about one of those um, tanker trucks, those, uh, those trucks that you see on the road that um, deliver gas, um, gasoline to different places right around mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. they have their own gas tank. And then they have this huge huge supply of gasoline in the back, right? Uh -huh. um, so if you look at it, um, you're, they could only go so far without running out of their tank of gas. But if they were able to tap in to the large tank of gas that they're traveling from gas station to gas station, they, they would have an um, amazing supply of fuel. Well, that's what we're doing with keto and intermittent fasting is we're tapping into a much larger supply of fuel that we're not tapping into before, running off of blood sugars to your fat supply. I mean, some people have a large reserve of fat to run off of, and others don't. But so that's that's awesome, um, Julia. Well done, and uh, can't wait to see your success fully to 100%. Okay, Karen. Okay, it's 11:53, and a winner has been chosen off of YouTube for the VIP ticket. Mm -hmm. It is T Flores from Greeley, Colorado. Yay! T Flores, awesome! Congratulations! Okay, you're congratulations! Get you're getting VIP ticket. That's huge. Yeah, that's going to be a blast. Now, what you need to do, T Flores, I need for you to reply here on YouTube that you heard me, and that it's a thumbs up, okay? And then you're going to email Dr. Berg at drberg.com and Dr. Berg at drberg.com. <laughs> email us, <laughs> just in case you didn't hear that. And we will, yeah, thank you for that. And Just that, helping out. And then we are going to verify your, you know, you are you and all of that. And we'll work with you on the arrangements to get your ticket when you get here. We'll have you on the list. Okay. Awesome. All right. Congratulations, T. Flores from Greeley, Colorado. That's awesome. Okay. And just to let you guys know. Um, I heard you. Good. Okay, great. Good. Um, and just so, so you guys know, uh, 10 uh, European nations have banned U.S. meat imports, and so they have their own meats, and it's probably um, the hormone-free. It's going to be like antibiotic-free, I would imagine. But I think you just, um, that's just some extra data for people <laughs> to ponder on, to chew on. But Wendy is from Tennessee, and she, want, she has a question. Go ahead, Wendy. Wendy? Are you there? You had a question about intestinal inflammation issues. Has she been waiting too long? Yeah, she fell asleep. Oh, there she is. I'm here. Okay, good. Here, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I, my questions were: um, Can fibroids affect intestinal inflammation? And in reference to hormonal acne. Um, if you get tested, uh, blood tested for your zinc levels, um, could they tell you, could the test, the blood test read it incorrectly? Mm, okay. Well, there's always a chance they can read it correct, incorrectly, but um, <clears throat> when you're dealing with acne, uh, zinc actually helps acne. But much more than that, you want to start doing research in the area of insulin, lowering insulin and improving insulin resistance for um, acne. And... Um, so that's probably going to create a way bigger effect than a zinc deficiency, FYI. Um, and that's the keto and intermittent fasting. 
Now, as far as fibroids creating inflammatory issues with your gut, I don't know if they create direct inflammation to your gut because it's kind of apples and oranges, but the same thing that causes fibroids is the same thing that will cause inflammation in your gut. So it's the high insulin again, right? So um, if I had a fibroid, what I would do, I would do intermittent fasting. I would do it quite long, and I think that would, uh, and I would bring down my sugars, and I would also probably add iodine from sea kelp, and that's going to kill two birds with one stone. One, it's going to lower inflammation everywhere in your body, and intermittent fasting is also going to create an incredible healing of your colon, so you're going to have a lot better function of your digestive system. And um, that brings me up to the next point, Karen. What? Nico's um, watching. Say hi to Nico. Hey, Nico. Hey, Nico. So here's, here's the thing. Um, when you eat food, you have the stomach that is very, supposed to be very acid. And then it's supposed to trigger an enzyme that breaks down protein. But there's not a lot of microbes in your stomach because the acid kills them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking at that. Right? Okay. And then what happens in the small intestine, you don't have a tremendous amount of microbes, which is kind of like people don't realize that. They, they think all the microbes are in the small intestine. No, maybe in the lower part of the small intestine, but not in the upper part. What you mainly have in the small intestine is uh, the pancreas releasing all the enzymes in there to break down food. And then you have the gallbladder releasing bile to break down certain fats. So you have this huge combination thing. So um, what happens is the food kind of comes down in the lower part. That's when you start having the help of the microbes. Uh, most of the microbes, like 90% of all the microbes are in the large bowel. And you're getting all this breakdown of all this, uh, this fiber and things like that. But when you... Um, have damage in the colon, maybe from antibiotics um, or other things, or eating a lot of the wrong foods, that's when you get an overgrowth of microbes in the small intestine, in the lower part, and that can grow up into the small part of the intestine, even the stomach, to the point where people can have like this bad breath or this yeasty breath. Uh, that's kind of like an overgrowth of yeast coming up through their breath. And um, I'm, not, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but... Uh, that one turn. Oh, really? Really, Steve? Did you have to add that sound effect? All right. <clears throat> I don't even know what that was. but um, We have producers. They're playing practical that jokes are, on us. That need to be restrained. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bad when we're the serious ones. Yeah. So the one way, one way you can solve <laughs> this problem is to add more acid to the stomach. So that's the opposite of vinegar hydrochloride, start killing off these microbes in the, in, the lower, in the upper part, and start to do keto and intermittent fasting. And you guys are going to find that a lot of the digestive issues will clear up. All right, so now, guys, if you wanted to download this, there's a link down below. It is the keto eating plan in a nutshell. Okay? I have this on a document. What? Hi, Terry. Terry's I waving. I don't, I don't know what this oh, what means. This mean? Are you saying that we're... Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that means, but um, okay. all right. So, guys, if you're are, if you're in my membership group, stay tuned because we're going to be talking to you right after we're done. And if you're in the lab, we'll be talk, talking to you right after that. Okay. So yes. when you say goodbye, look there because what right here? Yeah. Okay. Because that's if you're talking to me, look there. All right. Thank you, Karen, for correcting me on that one. <laughs> Okay, Somebody's guys. Got to help out here. Listen, thanks for uh, tuning in. Stay tuned next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Okay, and congratulations and to congratulations T. Flores on T. We'll you, see you at, at the summit. T. See you at the All summit. Right. All right, guys. Okay, bye. See you later.